Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Upkick MMA episode 398. I am Brendan. UFC 302, Makashev versus Poye. Okay, we're, we're going to go over this card. We're going to break all the fights down round by round. If you if you like this kind of stuff, subscribe to the channel. That way they know this video is coming out. I'd appreciate it. It helps me out. I know. I'm going to try to get excited about this. Um, this card kind of... Not kind of. This card sucked. There are some fun moments in the card, but... When you when you imagine watching three hours of fighting and this is what you get, two hours and 50 minutes of dead air, god dang, it was rough to get through. Like this, this sucked. This sucked. Um, we're going to talk about all the fights, break them all down uh, round by round, go through uh, literally everything on this card, uh, starting with uh, Poirier and Makashev. Okay, um... Makashev defending his belt, uh, you know, it's hard to imagine Makashev losing this fight given Poirier's history, All right? Um, barring some uh, big shots or, a, you know, uh, some sort of crazy improvement this late in his career, it's unlikely to see, you know, him winning this fight. And that's kind of what we saw here. There was moments, like I said, there were moments in this fight. There were times where you could possibly see this going another way but overall it just this fight was boring and I don't mean in a way like oh man they should be like destroying each other I mean it was just a lot of dead time there it's what you're going to get with the Dagestani style wrestling um you're going to get it with a lot of the stand-up that they do where they don't engage for most of the fight it's just a lot of standing around Makashev landing a nice right hand gets a takedown along the fence and he has his he has him uh, for the entire fight. He got his back, and that was the whole round. Four minutes and twenty three seconds, easily a ten nine. Obviously, Makashev's round. Second round, Poirier with the leg kick, and Makashev trying as hard as he can for that takedown. Poirier's having none of it. Uh, he did a good job overall through this fight, keeping his uh, keep keeping it up on the feet. Um, obviously, it didn't end out well for him, but you know, it, it just it looked like he did a good job preparing for this fight. Let's put it that way. Makashev going again for that long single, but Poirier stops it and lands an elbow in tight date. Nobody caught that. Um, great left hand from Makashev, but just not much offense from either guy. Poirier not wanting to overextend, and Makashev just not wanting to get into a fight, honestly. He just did not want to get into a trade. Uh, he did not want to trade. And then Makashev times Dustin Shorts pull up, um, like Dustin uh, pulls his shorts up quite a bit. I found that I do that too, and I don't know where it comes from. But I'm constantly pulling my shorts. He does it all the time. I mean, those of you guys who who watch MMA a lot or like watch a lot of UFC fights, you know that he does this. And he uh, Makashev timed the short pull up to go in for a takedown, which you know if you think about it, like oh that's good. He's timing when he's got like a a, a tell or a tick or whatever else, like a, a nervous reaction. But really, like his hands are down because he's pulling the shorts. So he timed it a little bit wrong, and you know, uh, Poirier's hands were already down there to help defend. Um, Poirier found some success in this round, uh, digging to the body with Makashev, go, going for that double collar tie. Um, it was close. There was moments in it where Poirier looked like he could have won this round. I just didn't. I didn't see it. Like the difference maker was Makashev had control, and yes, control isn't a major major factor. And for those of you out there, like that doesn't mean anything for damage. Like. I thought damage was relatively close. I thought it was actually pretty even. There was nothing on either side that made the damage stand out, okay? And you go to the next thing, cage control, control time. Makashev had more control time. It wasn't a lot more, 49 to 15 seconds, but it was more. Uh, so, you know, if, if you this was a closer round. If you gave it to Poirier, I understand it. I had Makashev up 2018. Third round, cl clash of heads. Um, they, they clash them real bad. And uh, then uh, Poirier takes a knee from Makashev, uh, takedown along the fence again, gets the back and then to the mount with two minutes and 20 seconds left. Poirier kicks out of it and back up with 210 left. Amazing. Uh, Makashev landing the right hand and Poirier landing back. Makashev coaching the rest of the round as Poirier trying to track him down. Um, this is, again, not the most fun fun round to watch. There was not a lot of damage put out here. Makashev won this one again, two minutes and 10 seconds of control time. The striking was relatively even. Poye probably got a, a little bit better of it, but the damage was so damn close, it's hard to really put it out in front. Like, the, like it would be 
unless you're out there with a force gauge and checking the damage, if that's how you want to do it, there's no way to tell me that Poye did more damage in this round. They're, they're just not. So I had him up 30 to 27. Like I said, not a fun fight to watch. Poye is digging that lead hook to the body. Somebody, yeah, somebody posted um, like, oh man, good thing this main event saved the card. It did not save this card. It did not. The co-main event was more interesting and that was not that great of a fight to watch either. <clears throat> but Poye is digging that lead hook to the body and using that to get the underhook to defend the takedown. It was really good. Very smart game plan from him. Makashev wants that takedown so bad. Um, not able to get it uh, early on in this round, but he was able to land Able to land his jab. Um, Poirier is digging to that body and it uses an elbow, cuts Makashev open. Makashev going for that takedown again in front of the commentary. Poirier is talking to them while he's uh, he's talking to them while uh, uh, Makashev's going for that takedown. Basically saying like like yeah, I'm sorry, this is boring. Blah 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 blah. Um, I I wish he would stay focused, but you know that's part of the game and he does talk in there and it's not that bad. Um, this round damage. Probably went to Poye. So looking at the striking numbers here, 23 to 20 in favor of Poye. Makashev really not a lot of control time as far as being on top. Um, if you give it to the holding time, I totally understand giving this round to Makashev. But um, yeah, I gave this one to Poye. So I had it uh, 39 to 37 going into the last round. Then Poye looking great, keeping Makashev off and making him tired, landing some really good shots. Makashev wants to take down, even going for the guillotine to get on top. Use that guillotine, transitions over to the Dars, and then gets the finish. Uh, so <sighs> I'm just not the biggest fan. I think a guy who fights uh, in his division once every you know year or once every two, a year and a half, it's just, it it's, doesn't look good for the division if he's only going to fight two more times or like I don't know how many more fights he's going to have if he's going to have this Khabib style you know I'm going to fight once in a while and then I'm going to leave it's good for him good for his career like overlook good for his money good for his health and good for his family but as far as his legacy goes like he's never going to be considered the best uh, it's just he's just not you have to find, you have to battle the best of the best in the division like Charles Oliveira for all of his flaws did that um, Makashev has, you know, he spent a year going after a guy who's, uh, significantly smaller in him than not even in his own division, um, and having uh, a split decision win over him in the, in the case. So like, is this one of those ones where like history will be dictated by the, the, the rest of his career, but we'll, we'll see what happens. I think Mateusz Gamrat will give him some challenges based off what I saw in this, like Poirier just having, you know, a, a, a lot of success staying on his feet throughout this fight. Looking at the scorecards here, I just want to get a touch on them. Uh, Eric Cologne gave the second round to Poirier. Sal Diamato gave the fourth round to Poirier. And then Chris Lee gave the second and fourth round to Poirier. So um, on one card, it was possible for Dustin Poirier to get the win here. And it would have been a split decision given how that last round was going to go. Uh, we don't know, but um, interesting. Uh, interesting, like the the scorecards and how that went. But uh, oh, by the way, the scorecards tonight and the fouls. So many, so many shit, so much garbage. It's so annoying. I don't. I we'll get into it when we talk about them because there was a lot of it. Okay. Side note. Um, Poirier has had a fantastic career, regardless of him never being the um uh, official title holder. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Um. In some of these divisions where the title holder, like, would you consider John Jones the the best heavyweight in the world right now? Or would you consider Tom Aspinall the best heavyweight in the world? That's what I mean. So, like, yes, John Jones is technically the champion, but did he face anybody in the heavyweight division leading up to his title shot? No. Did he, like, that, that's what I mean. Is like, there's certain times where the belt has, is less important than your record and who you faced in the division. Um, as of right now, I think Poirier has a better, uh, better career and a better resume than Makashev. Makashev can build on it, and he's definitely got the skills to do it. It's just he's he's got to fight more often, and he's got to fight the guys who are are coming up in the division. It, you, you, we can't keep doing this shit where everybody wants to fight everyone else in every other division. That has a time and place, and though it, this is not right now. All right, let's give it to a. Uh, I don't know, feel good story, but uh, it was something that rightfully happened because Sean Strickland taking on Paula Costa here didn't need to do it. Could have sat out and waited for a title shot. I mean, they're giving the title to Adesanya or giving the title title shot to Adesanya coming off of not even a loss against the current title holder. It, it's really interesting that they're doing that. I know why they're doing it. We'll talk about it when we get to it. 
Um, but Sean Strickland here, moving forward, the entire fight, just doing Sean Strickland things, just, uh, you know, doing the damn thing. Uh, Paula Costa landing that low kick uh, well, bouncing and staying on the outside as he backs up. Strickland using that stabbing front kick and co uh, Costa countering, finding the mark with that lead hook. Costa's moving backwards and just point fighting, going to the body with the jab and the low kick, and Strickland is out pointing him, right? Strickland catches a kick, lands a great right hand, and then back back to Costa backpedaling. This round was weird, right? If you go front kick for low kick, it's uh, front kicks to the, you know, from uh, Strickland and then low kicks for Costa, you know, they go kick for kick. Uh, you you want to look at the score, you want to look at the, the striking numbers. It apparently Costa outland, he did outland him here, 31 to 24. But looking at the, 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 the kicks here. So going to the body, 16 to 17 in favor of Costa. A lot of those were punches. Uh, leg kicks, obviously Costa did better there and Strickland outstruck him one to the head. But the thing is, when you're watching this stuff, if you gave this round to Costa, I understand it was a relatively close round. It, like I said, it was weird because if you went kick for kick, it, it, like in the moment, it never seemed like Costa was doing anything crazy. And some of these ones that were counted of these 10 were not, they did not land, right? This 10 of 12, like some of them were checked pretty bad. And then as you go on, you'll start to see like 14 of 15, 12, 10 of 12, 7 of 8, 5 of 8. You see these low kicks, they say they landed, but they really didn't. They were checked. So that does not count, right? It's like when you take a, sh a punch to the shoulder, like, yes, it, it landed on the body, but that's not, that's not a landed punch. So um, he checked some of those kicks pretty hard, and later on he did it to, so bad that Costa actually hurt himself kicking him. So if you want to call him a landed kick, sure, but as far as the damage went, you know, those kicks to the body, like from Strickland right up the middle, probably did more than the leg kicks, especially as far as, like, what happened. You know, Costa got tired, Strickland never stopped moving. So those leg kicks had very little effect on Strickland. <laughs> Um, if you gave this round to Costa, I understand. Uh, I just think Strickland did enough in this round. 10-9. Uh, so, and, oh yeah, and the backpedaling, right? Moving backwards is never a good sign, right? When you're constantly moving backwards and you're constantly moving out of the way and not wanting to engage and you're the one playing countering as you're moving backwards, it's it's a fine line that you're walking, man. Like, you have to... You have to Put yourself so far out in front while you're back and forward by landing big shots because you are conceding ground. You are showing that you are being passive. It is hard to score a round for Costa when he didn't really land a big shot. He didn't really outland him so much. Um, so like I said, if you gave this round to Costa, I understand. I just didn't. I didn't. I gave it to Strickland. Second round here. Here we go again with Costa on his bike backpedaling, kicking low, jabbing to the body. He did do well with those jabs to the body, um, but the pressure from Strickland just will not stop. For the 10 seconds that Costa stood his ground, and then they mentioned that, like, oh, look, now he's standing his ground. Now he's moving forward, and then immediately he's backpedaling again. Most significant moment of this round, two minutes in, was a check by Strickland causing Costa to limp, and then Strickland lands a hard jab, and Costa drops. That's another round for him. Oh, he did that in the first uh Oh, that's a thing. He uh, in the first round he caught a kick and landed a really great right hand, and then uh, Costa ends up like stumbling and backpedaling. That's the thing is like if you're moving f backwards and you lose the big moments in the round, you're gonna lose. You can't win a round by outpointing, moving backwards, and thinking that you're gonna win that round. I I just don't get it. 2018 for Strickland. Uh, these rounds aren't one-sided, but Strickland just keeps the offense on, moves forward, and manages to land one or two good shots in the round. Great lead hook to the body from Costa as he retreats. Costa shelling up, and Strickland landed a three-punch combo. Not a good look. Strickland checking a bunch of kicks and even uses his right leg to check one, and Costa limps backwards because he fucks his leg up so bad from kicking. Uh, another good round for Strickland. Costa finding less and less success as the fight goes on. Uh, outstruck here, finally, 45 to 34. Not even close. Um, definitely a Strickland round. I had him up 30 to 27. Uh, fourth round, probably Costa's best round. Uh, he has a decent start to round four, keeping the output up with Strickland as the first half, as even though he's backing up. And then he did fall away. You could give him this fourth round again. I, I, thought, I thought he did land the better shots in this round. He didn't take a big shot in this round which is how you do it. Even though he got outstruck, I felt like he landed more damage. You could give um, him round four. I thought that was his best looking round. 
Um, last round here. So I had a 39 to 37. Um, technically, I guess you could have it 2-2. Um, last round, Costa standing his ground, finding success with those low kicks, even finding the target with some of the right hands over the top. Strickland jabs and the front kicks are there all day, but he's just not following up with the power. Strickland ending the round with pressure and multiple head kicks and it was just throwing throwing caution to the wind, just fucking jumping and kicking, like doing all kinds of stupid shit. Um, yeah, yeah, great, great round for him. Great way to end it. And looking at the scorecards here, we had one we should look into. Uh, Saul Diamato gave that first round to Kosha and gave the next four rounds to Strickland. Totally understand. Good, good scorecard there. No problem. Chris Lee giving all five rounds to Strickland. Um, again, no problem with that. That's fine. And then Costa giving... Or, sorry, Dave Torelli giving the first four rounds to Costa. Listen, this is horrible. This is a bad scorecard. We're going to talk about it. I, I think it might have been on the the prelims that there was a really bad scorecard as well. This was shit. This is a fucking horrendous scorecard. And not. And I'll break it. I'll tell you why. It's not because it's four rounds to one. That's not the problem. They, like, you could say, well, this was a close fight. Any one of those. No, no. I'll stop you there. It's not any one of the rounds. He gave the first round to Costa. I conceded that that is acceptable, right? Close round, outstruck him. Second round, um, I, I don't I don't think so. Close round, but the big moment went to Strickland two times. Third round, again, not, not possible. You're not, you cannot, there is nothing in this third round. This is the worst round you could score for Costa. The worst. The fourth round, Okay, round one and round two, because like because the striking went to Costa's favor, you could look at it on paper and say maybe. Round four, because of the appearance of everything, maybe, right? So if you go off of paper in the first two, you can give it to Costa. But if you don't go off of paper on the four and you go off of appearance, you go Costa wins that round. Round three, indefensible. Indefensible. Impossible to defend. You cannot do it, right? Outstruck, 45 to 34. Okay, Costa's biggest strikes were to the legs in which he hurt himself multiple times. He had good body jabs. He had a good hook to the body, one good hook to the body. This guy got outstruck and outpointed and outdamaged so bad in this round. There was nothing, nothing you could say that gave Costa this third round. Yet somehow Dave Torelli saw it that way. If you gave him round one, two, and four, I disagree with you wholeheartedly, but you could defend it, okay? Close rounds, close fight, blah, blah, blah. Round three, this guy was fucking blind. He had blinders on. I don't know what he was smoking, but I want some of that shit. That's ho horrible. All right, uh, what's next for Costa? Uh, let's, um, I don't know. Oh, uh, let's see. Who's above him here? Brendan Allen's a good fight. I'd rather not see that. I think Brendan Allen needs to fight up, not down. Um, Marvin Vittori, we've already seen it. Nasruddin Imovov, that could be a fun fight. Jack Hermanson could be fun. Chim uh, Hamzat, they were supposed to fight. That one could be good. They should have done that a while ago, but obviously he's fighting Whitaker for some reason. Delize versus uh, Costa, that could be boring. Uh, Bojalio, that could be fun. And Pereira. Oh, man, that would be a blast. Oh, Michelle Pereira, let's get that one in there. That would be fun. That would be fun. I, I'd I'd vote for that. He's coming off a win. Costa coming off of two losses. I'd love that. Let's go for it. Puts him right in title contention. Pereira, not, uh, not Costa. Okay, uh, my favorite fight of the night Love this guy, Kevin Holland. You can't. You, this is he's one of my favorite uh, fight, favorite active fighters. I love this. I love watching him fight. Kevin Holland is so much fun. Kevin Holland taking on Michael Oleksychuk. This, uh, this was. We can look at stats, but there's not too much of that. It's more of just what happened. You should go back and watch the replay of this one. Holland with the lazy uh, right kick and Oleksychuk landing a hard left hand. Oleksychuk is walking him down with little to no defense, landing a big left hand, and Holland goes down. Holland goes for that triangle, switches to the arm bar, and he's really nice about it, holding the arm bar. He, he, he's basically doing what you do in training, right, where he's controlling the arm. He's really not cranking on it. He's putting pressure on it, letting you know that he has it, but he's letting him go. And then he's even talking to him. He's he's talking to him, telling him like, hey, come on, 
man, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? And he looks up at the ref and he's like, he hips into it a couple times. And then he's like, fuck it, fine. And he pulls it, over, puts it under the armpit and cranks it even further. Um, dislocates his arm, possibly breaks it. I think it was just, it's probably just a dislocation. Um, and then Oleg Sejcik, uh, he doesn't, technically he doesn't tap. He reaches over, which is why Herb ends up stopping it. Oleg Sejcik's press, uh, protesting and pissed off. But honestly, I was screaming. I was like, I was, I was screaming at the screen. I was like, Holland, he doesn't want to do it. Just snap it. Fucking snap his arm, man. We've seen people, we've seen this happen before. Vitor Belfort could have been the light heavyweight champion, but he let John Jones uh, go because he heard it. He, he dislocated, he fucked up John Jones' arm real bad and he felt it cracking and crunching and he let it go because he was hurting him. You can't, you can't do it. I know that the, like Kevin Holland's not an overly mean guy and you could tell in there, but these, these motherfuckers, like they don't care. They'll take advantage of everything that you give them. You you go nice on you go nice on them or go easy on them, in a moment they're gonna take it from you. They would not give you the same thing back. John Jones does not give a shit about your well being, right? Mike uh, Oleg Sechuk. I'm not saying he's a dirty fighter. He's not. Um, but he has to realize what just happened. Like he was put in a position where he was go he was losing. There's a there, you're you're losing. You lost. You lost. So now either you can get your arm completely broken in half, or you can tap. And he's lucky that it's probably just a dislocation. But this is fucking horrible. Like, you, can, like I can't stand that stuff. And these people are like, oh, well, he didn't tap. And he could fight, he could fight through it with one arm. Shut up, man. This is not what this is. Technically, you can fight with a cut that goes down to your bone, but they don't let you. You could fight with a broken leg, but they don't let you. So this whole thing where like, oh, like you have a dislo if you have a dislocated shoulder, they don't, they don't have to let you fight. If your shoulder pops out of the socket, fights have been stopped because of that. Fights have been stopped because a guy can't step on his foot even with a dead nerve. So uh, great win for Holland. Love seeing it. Love that arm bar. Uh, Alex Morono taking on Nico Price. Kind of a sloppy mess. Uh, hard low kick and a jab for Morono landing well. Price catching the kick and getting on top, getting stuck in the omoplata, and then Morono using that to get the back crucifix. Eventually, Price rolls out. Morono gets it back, but loses it again to get back up. Morono is, you know, throws a spinning back kick that lands uh, the one-two. After that, Morono isn't the cleanest striker, but he's throwing the correct strikes. Right? He's just his striking isn't smooth. It's not precise necessarily. He's just he's throwing the right stuff. He's doing basic striking, and it works a lot of the times. And then basic, and then awkward stuff. Right? It's not that like a spinning back fist is basic. Like he's throwing awkward things, but you know his basics are there. He's doing, he's throwing the jab, throwing the right, doing the things. Uh, and Price just did not find the, uh, the mark enough in this round. 34 to 16 in favor of Morono. Obviously winning this round 10-9. Second round, Morono more active, keeping offense out there, but both guys becoming more stationary when they throw. They're both getting tired. Price landing a hard right hand, staggering Morono and getting the takedown, landing some ground and pound. Morono not able to get any subs going, even though he was trying, going for the arm bar himself. Back on the feet, Morono's on the back still and Price landing a nasty back elbow. Um, Morono goes for the guillotine, just nothing there. Again, Price doing more damage, 34 to 21, basically a reversal of the first round as far as who did more damage. So it comes down to the last round. I had it 19-19. Both guys being so tired, it's getting really sloppy. Price getting the better of the exchanges, landing heavier shots, but there's a lot of ducking downs, leaping in, walking with the hands down, lots of tired movement here. Price just had a little more in the tank, yelling at him to fight back and screaming, gets the job done, 29 to 28 in my opinion. Opinion, and then he wins the fight. I think on all three Joe's scorecards, 29, 28. Yes. Okay. Um, let's talk about uh, a dirty fight. I'll say my piece on it when it comes up, but this one um, was not the most fun to watch uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, Randy Brown taking on uh, Ilyu uh, Zaleski Dos Santos. Brown using those low kicks and the long jab to keep Dos Santos out of range. Brown pokes him in the eye, which is not unusual. The guy pokes everybody in the eye. He used, he has very long reach. He's a fucking weight bully, a giant guy for the division. Um, reaches out all the time with his hands open, pokes him in the eye. Not like I said, not unusual, but was what un, was unusual is the ref. Let's let's call his name out here. Gasper Oliver. Oliver never seen him before. Uh, this fucking guy did not know what he was doing. Uh, the ref just says, okay, let's go. He doesn't give them any time. He basically separates them. He separates them and then tells them to get back to it. 
not giving Dos Santos like the opportunity to recover from an eye poke. And then Brown pokes him again. And then the ref just tells them to fight, which is absolute nonsense. Um, Brown's doing good job. He Brown did do a good job this round, punching a guy who couldn't see, uh, and then a big knee to end the round for Brown. So 34 to nine in favor of Brown for striking. Obviously he wins this round should have been a point deduction. Maybe we'll get one later. Uh, Dos Santos lands a knee, a huge right hand rocking us, uh, not a knee, uh, lands a huge right hand rocking Brown and shoving him to the cage, getting him down, taking the back. Brown gets back to the feet. Dos Santos on the back going for the rear naked choke. Can't get it under the chin. Uh, nasty neck crank though. Brown gets out of it and gets on the back. They try to make an argument that Brown uh, won this round because he ended the round going for a submission. First of all, no. Second of all, absolutely not. <laughs> like that's ridiculous. You can't, he was also in a nasty neck crank in a rear naked choke position for like a minute and a half, uh, you know, being in control for 30 seconds and then submitting, uh, attempting a submission for 10 seconds is not the same. I don't care if it's a, it, this whole thing, Joe Rogan has a really bad habit of this, uh, where at the, he puts so much emphasis on the ends of the rounds. He talks about it. He's been open about it. He thinks that if you're on top at the end of a round, that's that's who won that round. That's who's more important because you know, in the schoolyard or at school, you know, if you might have uh, you might have beat somebody up, but then you know he takes you down and gets on top of you, and that's when the fight gets broken up. Who was winning that fight when it got broken up? Like, okay, that's stupid. It's dumb. Like, first of all, that is not who's winning that fight. Like, because he keeps using that like it's just a given. It's not how that works. If you get your ass beat and then somehow fall fall ass backwards into the top position because of slamming into the lockers or tripping over each other or doing something stupid, maybe the guy like trips over his own foot or whatever, and then you end up on top. And then start throwing some, you, you start throwing some, some fists at him. And then the, the, the teacher comes and breaks it up. Were you, did you really win that fight? No, you fucking didn't. No, you didn't. Like, come on. It, it's, it's an asinine thing to say. It, 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 it comes from, I don't, I don't even know where. It's like the most basic high level observation of something that, I, I can't even put words to it. I think it's it's so stupid, it drives me nuts. So the fact that he's giving more emphasis to Brown being on top at the end of the round, meanwhile, uh, you know, Dos Santos had his back for a minute and a half, it's it's ridiculous. That's not how this works. Oh, well, he's still fighting. He like, if, if you beat the piss out of somebody for four minutes and 50 seconds and they're still there and they hit you one good time uh, before the end of the round, you can, what are you going to say that had more importance? Because, oh, well, he still eat, he ate all that stuff and he was able to keep standing and look at how good he... No! If you put that in the rules, you're going to see a different type style of fight. I'll tell you, you, you'll see a different style of fight. The fights are going to start a lot different. You're going to see a lot more tentative starts. You're going to see a lot more slow playing. And then in the last two minutes, people are going to pick it up. That already kind of happens in five-round fights as it is. A lot of fighters use that technique already. But you're going to see a more extreme version of that because people are going to play to the rule set. They're going to play to the judging criteria for the most part. Anyway, 19-19 going to third round. Okay, um, Brown pokes him again immediately in this third round. That's the third fucking time he poked him. No, n not even an acknowledgement, barely an acknowledgement of it. Doesn't say shit, doesn't do anything, tells him, like, I don't understand. Brown goes back to that jab. Santos trying to swing his way in and catch him with the second or third one. The knee up the middle from Brown's really nasty. He has some really good strikes. He outstruck him here 25 to 14. Obviously, he wins this round. But here's the thing. It is very hard to root for a guy who, listen, listen through all my stuff, okay? Because each any one of these things would be fine, maybe a couple of them. But having the combination of all of these characteristics makes you a very unrelatable and unlikable fighter. It's I, I'm I'm sure he's like he might be a p completely pleasant individual. He might be a really nice guy to hang out with. I'm just talking about from what I can see from the fight and what surrounds the fight. It's hard to root for a guy who talks shit, complains about boring be, things being boring in there. Like he'll he'll put his hands up and stuff when things aren't going right. He'll just sit there, not do shit. Um, uh, very tentative in some of his his moments. Eye pokes. Grabs the fence multiple times, jabs and retreats, and is a weight bully. If you're all of those things, like you're stacking the deck in your favor anyway. How, who's who's gonna who's there to root for you at the end of it? Your family and friends. 
Like, I, I just can't stand that shit. Obviously, he wins this fight. The score, uh, all three judges score, had the same same scorecard. I think they, the, the judges got this one right. The, the ref got it wrong. Should have been a point deduction. This should have been a draw. This should have been a draw. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, real quick, an update. Uh, uh, this video is at 30 minutes already. Holy moly. Um, uh, thank you guys for making it this far. If you do like this stuff, subscribe to the channel. Like I said at the top, I'd appreciate it. It helps me out. It lets you know the next video is coming out. Hit the like button if you did like it. Uh, I just want to go over some stats real quick at the end here. I haven't talked about these in a couple weeks, um, and it's been a while since uh, I made a, a full video like this. So um, we are currently at a total of 55 uh, fights that had uh, a net positive of fouls on one side. I've explained this before, but basically, if you and I poke, e I poke each other, they cancel each other out. If I, I poke you twice, then that, you know, I get the... That, that ends up on my side. If I, I poke you four times and you don't do anything, it still only counts as one, right? Um, because of the the foul for the fight, right? Who came out the net positive for fouling on the fight? Um, uh, with a current um, total fouls, 55 with a win, um, with 36 of those being the winner, uh, the guys who foul win 65.45% uh, of the time. We've had five weight misses, um, actually, what's interesting about that is the only two winners by weight miss. Uh, a ton of the most common foul is the low blow, right? 25 total fouls with 18 of those being from the winner, 72%. It is the most consistently actually eye pokes are good too. And so is a fence grab fence grabbers are at uh, 66% a win rate, um, you know, winning six out of the nine times. And then eye poking, uh, seven out of the 10 times we've had eye pokes a net positive eye poke. And there could be multiple fouls. I usually pick the most important one for the fight. So uh, it, the win, technically the win rate's higher than that, but it really comes down to, you know, if you're, if you're going to foul, you, go for it. If you're going to be a fighter who's less disciplined, go for it. Don't worry about it. You have uh, almost zero chance because think what are we up to as far as we've had one point deduction on a l one low blow oh crap this is from last year's stats my bad i'll talk about this again anyway all right uh, that's it for the video um we'll call it, we'll call it there uh i'll go i gotta update my stats and go through them uh appreciate y'all for stopping by it means a lot to me hope you guys stay, uh watch the next video love you guys peace